The message this morning is about while I was on my sabbatical. Um, so when I say I'm going, uh, I'm going to keep my peace, I meant what I said. And I wouldn't let nobody, I don't care who you are, you're not going to disturb my sabbatical. That's my sabbat, like this is the only time I had. So the title of uh, this morning's message is On Christ, the Solid Rock, I Stand. And when I say stand, I mean stand. I'm not backing off. I'm not moving. I don't care who you are. On Christ, the Solid Rock, I Stand. This message came from an experience I had while on my sabbatical. And when this situation happened, I knew that this would be a message due to the teachable moment. See, I don't let any moment pass that can be a teachable moment. That's what a teacher does. Takes, that, takes something to be like, you know what? Good teachable moment. As I'm on my 11th day, of my 31-day sabbatical, I attended. I meant that. I meant every day. Every 31 days of May was going to be peace, relaxation. So as I'm on my 11th day of the 31 days sabbatical, I attended a food truck festival, expecting to enjoy the beautiful, warm, and sunny day. And I, I mean, I was ready. I was like, shoot, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm looking good. Have my sunglasses on. And it just happened to be a very nice day that day in Louisville. So I'm excited to try the different ethnic food vendors because it was a food truck festival up here on the waterfront. So I'm excited to try all these different, different ethnic food truck vendors Minding, M-I-N-D-I-N-G, minding my own business because I'm on sabbatical, relaxation, peace, leave me alone. Minding my own business, up walks an individual whom I greet because I'm cordial. And I ask this individual, are you enjoying the church-wide sabbatical? And this is when the poop hit the fan. I don't cuss, so I got to say poop. This is when the poop hit the fan. Let me explain in more detail because this is where the teachable moments come in. Now, as I'm beginning to explain this story in detail, I ask this individual, are you enjoying the church who had sabbatical? And I was like, well, and I said, well, I haven't saw you. I thought maybe you don't went to see your family. <laughs> and so they was like, no. And I was like, okay. And so I said, well, okay. I said, well, I hope to see you when the, see you come back when the sabbatical is over. They said, no, you ain't. I said, well, okay. And so I said, oh, you found a new, another ministry? Because that's okay, too. They was like, no. And uh, they said, uh, you know what's going on, right? And I said, oh, here it goes. I'm like, oh, this is my peace. They said, you, you know what's happening, right? I said, yeah, I know what's happening. I said, what's happening? What, what are you saying what's happening? Because I said, I know what's happening. I know we in the end times. I said, yo, we in the end times. They was like, well, yeah, but you, you, know what's bad. you know what's going down. I said, what, what do you say is going down? I said, because I know what's going What are you saying is going down? Well, you know the name of Jesus? I said, yeah, I know the name of Jesus. Well, that ain't his name. I said, look here. I said, you ain't, because I'm saying to myself, this is my sabbatical. You ain't about to mess up my time. You ain't, this, is, this is my peace time. I'm down here enjoying myself, minding my business. This individual wants to go on and say, well, you know that that ain't his name. I said, well, of course it ain't all his name. I said, you do know he got other names. Well, see, 
well, see, you know, what if? Uh, they said, well, you know, you know, I just don't want you to go hell for calling his name wrong. I said, calling his name wrong. I said, look her. I said, look. I said, don't, don't go. I said, don't fall away off of a name. I said, keep, I said, keep what gets you to, to, to come to the truth. I said, don't walk away from prime fasting. I said, don't fall away over no name. I said, you ain't got to come here. Don't fall away over no name. I said, I said, I said, Jesus ain't his only name anyway. Well, don't you think, don't you think if you, uh, uh, when you see him and you've been calling his name wrong, he going to say, depart from me, I don't know you. I said, so. I'm like, you caught the wrong one on the right day or the right one on the wrong day, you going to get something today. I just came down here for some ethnic food. But I'm about to give you a mouthful of strong word food. With my sunglasses on. Because we're mindful. I'm minding my business. What you just said. <laughs> Whatever that means. See, y'all be teaching me wrong stuff. I don't know if it's right or wrong. I don't even know what that means. But I said, uh-uh. I said, no, you ain't, like, you ain't about to mess up my day. And I said, no. And I said, look. And I kept saying, don't, don't let. I said, don't walk away from Jesus, I said, don't walk away from praying and fasting because I know as long as you're praying and fasting, God is going to speak to you. Regardless on if you think his name is Jesus or not, keep praying and fasting because that's how you hear truth. And so, so this individual said, well, don't you think someone will be offended uh, if uh, they, you've been calling their name wrong? Uh, for all this time, and I said, teachable moment. I said, well, look here. I said, look. I said, I said, people call my name wrong all the time, and I ain't offended. I said, my, I said, Missy is not my name. I said, Emisha is my name. I said, we, I go by Missy for short because people mess up Emisha all the time, and I don't get offended. And I said, and I still answer to Missy, even though my name is Emisha. And so this person still wants to be dogmatic on, see, no, the, the, no, see, you just, don't, you just don't know the name of Jesus. I said, look, I said, he has more than one name. I said, when I say Jesus, the demons know I ain't saying Jesus. Ain't no demon ever said, I'm going to keep messing with her because she's saying Jesus. And I said, look her, I said, we, I said, I can say Jesus right now loud and people will start looking around. And I said, I don't care what you done come across. I said, you done, I said, see, this is what's happening. I said, y'all out here eating everything. Y'all sick. And then y'all got a nerve to come to somebody, like right now, the issue I'm dealing with, I don't call something from Costa Rica. I, don't, I think it was at the Korean barbecue place or whatever. Because I'm not used to the produce, my body yet. So I'm sick. And they looking, but they healthy, they used to it. So, and that's just the same as you, an uh, uh, individual out here, just out here eating offline stuff like you. Like you just eating anything, and you gonna come to me? You gonna come to me? I know the word. I ain't backing down. So I'm standing right here with this individual, and I kept saying, "Look, don't walk away from God." I said, "Keep praying and fasting." And I said, "Well, you know what?" I said, "Now nah, I'm gonna hit you with this truth since I ain't gonna never see you again." I said, "What brought you to our ministry?" I said, "What brought you all the way from where you was? Cause you ain't from her. What brought you to this ministry?" I said, what's the name of Jesus? I said, that prayer and that fasting. I said, that strong word. I said, see, I said, I said, since you won't talk about the end times and what's happening, I said, the Bible says that people are going to fall away. 
going at the teachers that tickle their ears, giving them something that they want to hear. I said, y'all at her falling away. I said, we still on the straight course. I said, Jesus ain't, I said, he show up. I said, that name, is, I said, when I go through stuff, I use that name. I said, and that ain't his only name anyways. And I said, and I can say this, I said, I can say this so bold to you right now, being a woman, because this individual was a man. And I said, I ain't backing off of what I said. And I said, I don't care who heard what I'm saying. I said, I can stand right here right now, boldly proclaiming that Jesus is king. And so he was looking at me like, like, dang, like you gonna do this? Yep. You mess with me on my sabbatical. I'm in my peace. I got Jesus with me right now. And that's what I told him. I said, Jesus with me. I said, the power of God is right with me right now. And I can preach right now. And, and I said, I don't care who hear me, what they say. I said, I bet you they'll be like, Jesus is powerful. Because I'm not backing down on what I know. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. Y'all better get that in your heart. Y'all out here eating, feasting, getting messed up, having traveler's diarrhea. <laughs> just the runs, just running, eating everything. You got to know what you eat. And I knew at that time, eating that at that Korean barbecue place, eating that lettuce, I said, I shouldn't be eating this. But I indulged, and I'm paying the price. But, so, and, I, and so I saw this little skit last week, and I thought it was funny, and I'm going to say it, because this is how people are. So the little girl, and I, I, it was a skit because, so the little girl came to say Happy Father's Day to her daddy. Everybody was in the front room. She had her little tape recorder thing. She started saying, Daddy, <laughs> I need a daddy. <laughs> a daddy. And they were like, wait, what, what, what are you singing? Because this song is the worldly song. She ain't singing daddy in the sense of, Ah, man. But see, y'all going out here looking for teachers because y'all need a daddy. Y'all looking for somebody who's going to give you what you missing instead of praying and fasting to get what you need, what's missing in your life. So as this individual still talking to me, I'm like, look, I ain't going to never see you no more, which is fine. I said, but I'm not backing down to you or nobody else when it comes to what I know is truth. What I know the truth to be. I know Jesus personally. So when Elder Show was up last Sunday, he started speaking about, about this. I said, oh, I hope he don't start preaching my message. Because I knew at that time, I said, oh, I'm getting up and preach this. I said, I'm getting up and talk about Now, I, I, I'm not, because I, I was doing something yesterday, so I didn't. But I had already had something written out that I never talked about before, added to this message. But I said, I'm getting up talking about this because this is a teachable moment. Because the Bible says in the last days, those who were strong, some who were strong, are fo will fall away. And if you ain't, look, look, look how many male pastors have stepped down just in within the last month for ministry. Think about that. Because people are following away with another doctrine. Look how many, just look around. Look how many people have fallen away. They like, ooh, I, ooh, ooh this church got it on point. All right, you, they go over and get sick and realize they walked away from what was solid and stable. Now they over just fitting in with the world. They thought they was going somewhere strong. And now they worldly minded. This is what's happening. It don't matter where you go, what city you go to, what country you go to. People are falling away from strong doctrine, from the truth of the word of God. Because the truth of the word of God is going to keep you straight. Be like, look, you wrong. But they go to a ministry that, that makes you feel good. Oh, you're going to get an increase today. And they just want the emotional hype. Emotional hype don't grow you. A uh, 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 right now prophetic word to yourself, that don't grow you. But this solid word right here, 
pray without ceasing. Without holiness, no man should see the Lord. Because it's putting it back on you. Every message of mine and even the messages of Pastor Steve, even when he was alive, when it comes to personal growth, those messages count number is very low. But when it comes to something like whoremongering leaders, them numbers are high. Because they thinking, oh, it ain't going to be about me. You got a shocker if you watch that message. Because <laughs> you, I, I, I added you in there. They was like, ooh, she's going to be talking about all the dirt that's going on in the church. Yep, and you were part of it. But when it comes to something they feel like it's trivial or about somebody else, those numbers are high. And they, you own it, Sister Misty. But when it comes to any messages about personal growth, res taking responsibility of your personal spiritual health, numbers are low. So as this individual tried to tell me that Jesus ain't his name and that if you don't use his name, you're going to hell. That's when I had the issue, like, wait a minute, what was it? And that's when I said, what brought you to our ministry? Remember, because you wasn't saved. And you do know I've watched you. I know you ain't Holy Ghost Spirit filled. So I know there's some things lacking in your life. I can take, and it's okay if you're a baby, but by you being a baby, you went over here and start feasting on something and think you know something. Then gonna bring that mess, that junk, that bad food to me and try to lay it at my doorstep like I'm doing something wrong. And I'm like, baby, hold up. I've been serving him since 1995. I ain't doing this. When I say serving him, I ain't backslid once. I ain't had no other Negroes on the side. I've been living this life pure, holy, pleasing unto the Lord. And you going to come to me and tell me because I'm saying, Jesus, I'm going to hell? And I know your life is dirty. You don't know nothing? Like, please. I like, know it's going to be a message. And this is what happens when you have babies in the faith who keep eating other stuff. We tell you all the time, stop eating that stuff. Stop going online. And I told this individual, I said, this is what, I said, this is the issue I have. I said, online can be good, good but it can also be bad. I said, the bad part of it is, y'all go at the people who tell you what you want to hear. You can get online right now and look up anybody that's going, that's going to agree with what you want to do. If you feel like you was born a whore and that stripping is right for you, there's a church for that. You be, there's a church that teaches you how to strip. Think it's called strippers for Christ. But make that make sense in, you know, with the right now king word. It don't. You got to rebuke them. But over here in this club, they like, they're swingers for Christ. And I ain't talking about going to the park and swing. See, there's something for in anybody what you want to believe. And then when we stand on this truth, they look, won't look at us like we wrong. I'm like, no, God's word ain't never wrong. And so in order to shoot, shoot down what I'm saying, they want to say, well, Sister Missy, well, you a woman. Like, yeah, I know that. Well, see, according to God's word, you sinning. Well, I ain't sinning. Well, see, and you, you ain't supposed to be over the church. Well, tell God that because he sure talking to me. He sure talking to me. And so they want to say, well, I ain't got to listen to her because she a woman. She ain't supposed to be preaching no way. Well, okay, well, you, obviously you ain't read the word because that's a whole lot of women in this Bible that was speaking God's word. And I still ain't going to back down. I don't care what you say. I ain't backing down off of what you think. Because I know I'm here. And when I know that 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 I'm hearing God, who are you? Well, my pastor said so. Who is your pastor? He ain't God. He might be your God. He ain't mine. He ain't who I pray to. And so I keep telling people, fast and pray, fast and pray. Fast. You can't go wrong. The Holy Spirit ain't going to lead you wrong. You can't fast and pray and be like, well, I heard God. God told me to uh, 
that that's my husband over there. That's my wife. Not if they married. You ain't been fasting and praying right. Who have you been praying to? Because there's another God, the God of this world. And so people are going after the God of this world, which is do thy will. What you think, how you feel, your lust, your ambitions, your whatever. So now as we get back into this, and I said what I needed to say to this individual and ordered my food. I actually, I was waiting for my food. And I said, I'm like saying to myself, like, you're not going to drop this off on me. This is my time This of peace, of peace. So they looked at me and they was like, well, you know, that, that band over there is really nice. So I said, yeah, it is. All right, well, you have a good time, you know. Yeah, right, because you don't let people, and I'm not going to sit there, or I'm not arguing at all, but I'm standing on the truth of God's word. I'm defending the doctrine. I'm like, how dare you come to me with some foolishness, knowing that I know. See, I have a personal experience. You cannot beat my personal experience. Example, just like a woman giving birth. If you gave birth, you know everything she's feeling. You know how her, she's dilating. You know how it feels. Your body feels when that contraction is hitting your body. So you know, don't talk to her when she's getting that contraction. A woman, no. Be like, baby, I ain't going to even talk to you. I'll wait for that contraction to pass because they got experience. But a man, he talking to her. You feel that contraction? Yeah, she feel the contraction. He don't feel the pain, so he doesn't know. He's just looking at the monitor saying, oh, you got a contraction coming up. She know. Yo, what? <laughs> Yo, well, Elder Show said, he'll, he'll say, why are you making that face? Pain. Pain. Unbearable, unbelievable. How can that this happen, pain? Pain, you ain't going to never touch me again, pain. Until the baby is born and you be like, look at what we made. Praise the Lord. And you want to do it again because of the joy of the parenting. But experience, a woman who has had a baby or has, has been in labor and has, her body has dilated, you cannot tell her that what she's feeling. Nobody, unless you've experienced it, because you now know. Uh, you, you hear the saying, Unless you've been in their shoes. Don't judge unless you've been in their shoes. And you know how we always judge when we ain't in somebody's shoes and we go through it and you realize, I got better respect for them. I ain't know nothing. I, didn't, I have better. It don't matter what it is that they went through. I have better respect for them. So because people are so immature, other novices in the faith, they just out here eating stuff. And this is how, this is how, the, and they take it back to their brothers and sisters in the body. And because they feel like they bored with their life, they get to eating too. And now you got two sick sheep. And now you got to start quarantining these cats because they're going to make the, try, to, try to infect the other sheep because they don't stay by themselves. Because they're like, I don't want to be sick by myself. That's why they had to start locking people up in COVID. Because they was going out and purposely infecting others because they don't want to stay home sick. Well, why are you going to make me sick? I don't want to be, my, be by myself. So you have people going out just eating stuff. taking. And, and so I said, I'm going to talk about this detail. So a novice. A novice is a person new to our inexperienced. Inexperienced in the field, excuse me, our situation. So this person that came to me, they are a novice. I knew they were a novice. They should have known that they were a novice. But they came to me like they, like the, this was solid God truth. And that I'm going to hell for saying Jesus. Based off of what they done heard on, on somebody's podcast. Podcast ain't a relationship with God. The people delivering it ain't got no godly wisdom. They ain't Jesus. They ain't the Holy Ghost. I don't take no podcast word as truth. You don't know these people. 
Like you have a, per and I kept saying, brother, don't lose your personal relationship with God. Keep praying and fasting. I said, because that's what got you saved. I'm not saying that he wasn't saved. I'm just saying people walk away. They trade their, their Christ-centered, found the solid rock foundation for something that tickles their ears, to make them feel good. Because somewhere down the line of staying on this solid rock, they got bored. Ain't no excitement. No, hold the line. Hold the line. You ain't never lived this good in your life. You ain't never lived this straight in your life. But they get bored with straightness. They get bored with contentment. They want something. Oh, I need to hear something else. Itch. So they go looking for a daddy. I need a daddy. And that's what they do. And that, Negro saying, yeah, we be your daddy. Because what the Bible said when they was crying for a king. They was crying for a daddy. God said, I'm your daddy. They said, no, we want a king. God said, well, okay, you want a king? It's what he going to do to you. He going to take your best. He going to use y'all. He going to use your children. Y'all ain't going to have nothing. Y'all going to have to do everything. Y'all going to build his kingdom. And this is what these cats want. That's why they go online. I need a daddy. Daddy. And they thinking, ooh, this daddy going to speak into me, be my best everything, going to show me truth, going to lead me, give me direction, purpose in life. And these cats over here saying, yeah, now nah, you're going to build my kingdom. you going to, now nah, you're going to be, you're going to do what I said you're going to do. So then back to what I'm saying, this a novice is a person new, I, new to or inexperienced in the field or situation. Another word for novice is a newcomer, learner. Beginner, tenderfoot. You, you understand? That's the best word, tenderfoot. Like you tender. Like, oh, tenderfoot. You don't know nothing. Newbie. And that's more words to go along to it. Doctrine is something taught as a religious tenet. And this person thought that just because they own this podcast talking about God, what God? You do know there's more than one God, right? Amen. We talk about the uppercase G-O-D. They talking about it can be the God of their mind. The, they can say that they God. But, this, but because they was, the, well, and they wasn't deceived, deceived, they went looking. And you know when you go looking, you're going to find something. Right. So now they, they getting taught another doctrine. Uh, so they taught another doctrine as a religious tenet, and the tenet means opinion or belief. They're getting another belief in them to where they walked away. They got off the solid rock, which is Christ. See, in rock, why do I know Christ is the solid rock? When you look at whatever people build outside of Christ, does it last? No. How are they keeping their adherence? Are they keeping them by prophecy, a personal prophetic word? Are they keeping them by controlling their mind, controlling their marriages? Because this is what happened in a whole lot of churches. And you know that church ain't on the solid rock Christ when they controlling your marriage by giving you a personal word, by showing, by telling you if y'all leave this ministry, y'all going to marriage going to dry up. You should never tell nobody that. Right. That's witchcraft. Are they telling you, but well, see, you know, I, can, I am, because this is what cats are saying now. I am the truth. I am Jesus. You got a man, a whole grown man out here calling himself the Holy Spirit. You got, I think you got somebody else, else out here saying that they Jesus reincarnate. Yeah, look, all this stuff is out here, and people just, because they don't want, they don't want to toe the line of accountability for their own life, they go, they go ooh, I'm going to click on it. Ooh, that word was good. Ooh, 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 they preached good. Okay. It's always in the Kool-Aid. Mm. We see that every time God's people believed in their heart another truth or doctrine other than God's holy word, and this individual, our people may think, what well, they putting in some word, yeah, but you're still drinking the Kool-Aid. They going to make it seem good. 
Well, uh, praise the Lord, God. But they giving you poison too. So whenever they believe another doctrine other than God's holy word, they are led and lead others astray just by their human understanding. His human understanding. He think he done got something. He done got a piece of gold. Baby, you got fool's gold. Cause the solid rock is gold enough. I'm still standing. Ain't fell off yet. Second John, you ain't got to turn there because I'm I got a lot of screw. That's why I said you can't mess with nobody who know the word. Like shoot, you like you get you caught the wrong one or the right one on the right day. And this individual just didn't know, baby. This is you you just gave me a teachable moment on what it looks like when you turn away from Christ. 2 John 1 and 9 through 11 says, holding to sound teaching, sound, trying to keep people sound in this thing. They don't want to be sound. They want to be unstable and unfaithful because in the instability and unfaithfulness, they can do what they want. But there's a price for doing what you want. You're not going to have that strong Christ-centeredness in you no more. But 2 John 1 and 9 and 11 says, holding to sound teaching. 1 John 2 and 18 through 27 speaks about false Christians and how you will know that they are really, how they are really antichrist and, and how the anointing is used. The Holy Spirit should, should bear witness of the truth. That's why I said you better stay woke because the Holy Spirit is woke. It bears witness of the truth. You can't get around no group of people calling themselves Christians and say, Lou, we got to be non-woke. Antichrist. Holy Ghost says stay woke. I'm true. The, the Antichrist is alternative fact, alternative truth, sleepiness. Y'all better know what the Bible uh, equates when it talks about sleep. In sleepiness. So, 2 Peter 2 and uh, 2, 1 through 22 talks about false teachers secretly introducing destructive heresies, which heresies are unorthodox opinions or religious beliefs. These people are bold and arrogant in their sin, they blaspheme. In matters they don't understand. You got some people out here preaching, you don't need the Holy Spirit. It's witchcraft. Holy Spirit ain't never told me to cuss nobody out. Ain't never told me to do no sexual lewd acts. Ain't never told me to do no, no, don't. It ain't never told me to go steal. It ain't never told me to go punch nobody up in their face. Holy Spirit ain't never told me to do nothing wrong. Ain't never told me to do nothing wrong. But you got people out here saying the Holy Spirit is a form of witchcraft. That's why I said I got these scriptures. And actually, I did this message years ago. I just never preached it. And I said, oh, what, oh, well, what time? Oh, what time? Like you, like, let me finish reading here. So, these people are arrogant in their sin. They blaspheme in matters they do not understand. They have left the straight way. See, the straight way, serving God is straight, baby. We're going straight. Solid. Keep my own God. Amen. When I say that, I think about the movie in um, The Hell. When Miss Minnie said, I'm keep my eyes dead straight on you. Well, keep that mindset on God. Keep my eyes dead straight on you, God. When people could say, well, you know, hey, this is new uh, uh, doctrine now. Come over here and hear it. Keep my eyes dead straight on God. Amen. I ain't been off yet going dead straight on God. Amen. I've been blessed. Obviously, this is good because when you serve God, keeping your eyes dead straight on him, Amen. blessings come. Amen. Blessings come in your life. Your life begins to make sense. But when you over here dibbling, dabbling, and mixing and matching, God ain't no Baskin Robbins. He don't give you 31 flavors. And he ain't no smuggest board. 
It's like, no, nah, you, you, you got to learn how to eat meat. Amen. But let me get back to what I'm saying here. So, so they have left the straight way and have wandered, wandered to follow the way of Balaam, who, who was a, a strong, Balaam was a strong man of God until he sort of like, well, shoot, they keep offering me money to curse these people. I, I want the money. Money should never control you. Money should never control you as a Christian because when it does, you ain't following God. You can be brought. Just like if our politicians out, they keep getting caught up accepting bribes, taking stuff, they're brought. And you can't trust the, you can't trust the treasonous or a traitor or a liar. So, so, uh, so, but anyway, so Balaam, well, okay, so let me finish reading. They appeal to lustful desires of sinful men, sin, the sinful human nature. So when these people are talking to you, eventually it's going to come out. They appeal, they going to get, have y'all seen the, um, the Netflix, the TikTok dance thing, the documentary on Netflix, the TikTok thing, at pastor. That's why I said y'all better know who cats are. How clean they life is, cause we came out here a predator. He a whole enough, show enough predator. Cult leader. Go watch the documentary. He gonna tell the women, and he want them to give them him massages. He gonna tell the he supposed to be pastor. Go tell the women. Well, David had a, a multiple wives. And you know, you know, I'm a man. I'm like David. Matter of fact, you know when people are off because they start saying that they are God. He starts saying that he's Jesus. That he has the word. God speaks through him to give the word. And he started uh, raping the women. He a, whole, he a whole pastor. Watch the documentary. He ain't the only one. That's why God, that's why I call God be uncovering this stuff to show you they not falling after me. They done got off of me a, while, a long while ago. So they entice people just escaping from those who live in error. This brother had just started trying to do right, but he got enticed by something he went looking for. He had just escaped error. Now his, he gonna be way worse because when he wake up and realize this stuff ain't, it ain't feeding you. And as you keep scratching at the surface, you're going to realize it's, gonna, it's always going to be some sexual lust involved. Because when you ain't on that straight nerve with God, you don't, you don't know how to control your sexual urges or your body. Even in the church, if you ain't on that straight nerve with God, you'll see behind the scenes they are predators, sexual predators. And now y'all see why they want me to shut up. <laughs> they like this woman be telling some stuff. Okay, so let me finish reading here. So they promise others freedom. Yeah, they promise you freedom. They promise you that they got the word for you, that God is speaking through them, while they themselves are deprived. They are deprived. You get around them, they deprived, and it's always going to be some sexual perversion stuff. Because the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, is what causes you to get yourself right, get your mind right. You got to do some work to keep yourself clean. So uh, to have escaped, so uh, they escaped the corruption too. So these people who have escaped the corruption of the world only to become re-entangled again, they are worse off than before, like a dog returning to its vomit. Now, see, you, this is when the Bible started making sense to you, when you see people like that, they, they was going, doing good. They done got, got a hold to something, got sick, uh, 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 and then got sick off of something they done ate, or uh, they thought that they was about to get some good weed, and it was dosed with something, now they crazy, and everybody remember, they was fine until they hit that weed. Now, this, and then these scriptures come back to your mind like a dog returning to its vomit. They went right back from what they was clean from, like a dog returning right back to its vomit. 
Dog didn't even want to stay clean. It'd rather go eat its own vomit. Hebrews, and you, don't turn here because I'm just talking. Hebrews 9 and 11 through 28 talks about Christ coming as high priest and entering the most holy place once for all by his own blood and becoming mediator of a new covenant. Oh, Lord, I'm trying to get finished here. Hebrews 4, 12 through 13 talks about God's word is living and active, sharper than any edge, any double-edged sword, and penetrating through the everything. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Y'all got to understand that nothing in all creation. Don't let nobody tell you not, nothing. In, ain't nothing done today that is new. It's, it's, a, it's the same old lies, the same old tricks, the same old games. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Don't let nobody come to you and be like, ooh, it's this new word out here. Uh, ain't nothing new, baby. Ain't not, God's word is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Yes. Don't let nobody say, ooh, it's out. It's so a utopia. It ain't new. It ain't not, uh-uh. The utopia I want is when he said we're going to New Jerusalem. And you ain't taking this body. So Titus warned. 10 through 16 speaks that there are many rebellious people going around ru ru ruining whole households by teaching things that ought not to be taught just to gain money. Think about how many, we got to fight cats all the time who, who steal our stuff so that they can gain money for them, stealing our stuff, and then get mad when we be like SRs, give us our stuff back. They gonna have a nerve to say Pastor Steve would never. Well, I'm Mrs. Pastor Steve, and I'm telling you, nigga, give me my stuff back. That's mine. But to gain money, and they was like, well, we sharing the word. We'll send them over to our page. We got every platform available. Send them, if you want them to know, okay, send them to our stuff. But these cats won't gain money off of you. Let me find my place here, because I got a lot to say. Oh, Lord. Okay, the rebellious people running around, ruining whole households by teaching things they ought not to be taught just to gain money. The Christians listening to them need to be rebuked sharply so that they will be sound in their faith. This is why, and this is why we rebuke if it's something wrong, so that you can be sound in your faith. Because have you ever been around somebody? Uh, better yet, an example, your zipper down, and you walking around everybody, and ain't nobody saying nothing to you. And that's all it took was somebody to be like, hey, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. And when you say X, Y, Z, everybody going to check, because we know what that means. And then that person would say, good looking now, thank you, instead of walking around like you cool. I'm, so I'm going to give this story. Stisha said, Mama, she said, one day, she said, I was like, oh, I must be looking cute. She said, so I'm still just walking. She said, people kept blowing and stuff. She said, I'm like, oh, I must be looking cute. She said, they was trying to get my attention to tell me my skirt was in my panties. <laughs> she said, I was like, oh, I must be looking cute. And they didn't say, like, Lord Jesus. So <laughs> back to the message. Titus 2, 1 through 15, talks about the various things that must be taught. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7, talks about godliness in the last, in the last days, having a firm of godliness. And this is what people are dropping off. They're dropping away, are falling away, are moving away because they don't want it no more because, you know, everybody... It's, you know, good. But having a form of godliness with no Holy Spirit, power, you're weak-willed. See, having a form, you thinking you have a form of godliness, but you have no Holy Spirit power. The Holy Spirit is what backs up the power to be godly. We can't do, let, let me tell you something. If you're watching online, there's no way that you can live for God without having his spirit. 
we tried it and we failed and we messed up and we say, God, I'm sorry, I didn't think, I didn't try to do it. But when you have his spirit, even then at times you mess up, but you're not purposely messing up. When you see people who cannot live, who's always falling into sexual sins, our, our perversions, like it had, they, they, they're lacking God's spirit. You can't be strong without his spirit is what gives you power. And it's what gives us power to say, no, I ain't getting high. I don't get high no more. No, I ain't lying in the streets no more. Nope, I don't do that. No, we don't mess around no more. The Holy Spirit is what gives you the power to say no. But having, trying to have godliness with no Holy Spirit power, you're weak-willed ever learning, never able to acknowledge the truth. It don't matter if you're a man or a woman because you see people ever learning. You keep going to jail. You keep losing your money. You keep losing in life. You're ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You need to break your will and say, Father, I need you. I need a change in my life. Quit thinking that you're good. Quit thinking you God. You ain't. You a failed G, little case G-O-D. And all little cases G-O-Ds fall down. Every time. Because God is holy. He said, he said he shares his glory with no one. So, 1 Timothy 6, 3 through 21 talks about if anyone teaches false doctrine and doesn't agree with sound instruction of the Lord Jesus Christ, our godly teaching, he is a conceited and knows nothing. Paul goes on to say that godliness with contentment, meaning be fine in what state you in. Who said you got to be rich? You good? Your marriage good? You good? Your kids good, you good. See, you just don't know what good is. Because you get some money and lose your marriage, lose your kids, because the money took you away from your family because you're working all these hours. But if you got enough that y'all good, y'all content, your, your bills getting paid, baby, that's good. That's good. He able to come home at night, that's good. Y'all doing good. You just don't know what good is. Which is content, be content with what you have. Be satisfied, our satisf satisf satisfaction is a great gain. That same people have wandered from the faith when they're not content, when they're not satisfied. This is what causes them to wander. They're not satisfied. They feel like there's something more out there. The, like I'm a kid, I'm, there's something out there waiting for me. I just need to find another person that's going to be able to speak what I feel like I need. If you ain't getting it from the Holy Ghost, you don't need it from a person. They cannot be your Holy Ghost. They can't be your Jesus because they're going to fail you and you're going to be messed up. So it causes you to wander from the faith, seeking many other things. Paul told Timothy to flee from all. He said, flee from all these things, that per, uh, uh, this and pursue righteousness. So if you ain't pursuing righteousness, faith, love, peace, that's what I pursue. I like my peace. I'm like, uh-uh, taking down my hair. That's why I said I got to keep my peace. Taking down my hair, I cut some, some of my hair out. So I said, well, let me, let me call the young lady that put the her in. She said, I'll take it down for you. She took it down. When I got home to take down my braids, she done cut some pieces. And I said, look, I'll keep my peace. I said, uh-uh, keep your peace. Keep your peace. I mean, I text her, but I said, I, can't, I, I don't want to be mad over this because I'm so mindful now. Don't. I don't want to be, I don't want to walk around angry. I don't. I don't want to walk around angry. So I was like, okay, keep my peace. And the, she was apologetic of what she did, you know. And I went to my hairdresser, my hair, because she was going to cut my hair anyway. But, I mean, and I told her, I said, you see, this is all, this is, this is, she said, it's okay. She said, it's okay. She said, you want your hair in your natural style? She said, nobody will never know. She said, you good? 
She said, plus, and Stisha told me, she said, yeah, mama, she said, you just don't know I done cut pieces out of my hair too, taking it down. And my hairdresser told me, she said, yeah, everybody cut their hair. I said, but I thought uh, if I paid her to take it down, my hair wouldn't be cut. Stuff happens, and I had to leave it at that. Stuff happens, and I'm like, okay, be at peace about this. Keep your peace. And I'm learning to keep my peace no matter what. Even when there's things that's upsetting, like keep your peace. Just keep, stay calm. Just stay calm about it. Because you never know how your peace is affecting somebody else. It's causing them to see, dang, they kept their peace. What, what do you get that's causing you to keep your peace? Teachable moment. That's another teachable moment. Baby, this is Jesus. This is God. Baby, this is the, you, the Holy Ghost. Because they will start to seek out. Well, shoot, you, you kept your peace through all of that. It's, baby, it's God. It's, it's, it's ain't me keeping me. This ain't me. This is his holy of the ghosts keeping me. That solid rock, Jesus, that I still stand on. Second Thessalonians says, stand firm. And this is what I did when that young man was speaking. I was like, oh, I'm standing firm. The Bible talks about how will you be able to speak to if somebody comes bringing something other, how will you be able to defend the faith? I ain't arguing with nobody. That's why I, I ain't arguing with you. I ain't arguing with nobody, but I'm going to stand in the truth that I know is truth. I know this for a fact is truth. Stand firm, solid, fixed, stable, strong, and steady in the faith, and hold to the teachings which we passed on to you, whether by word or by mouth. 2 Thessalonians talks about, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 12, talks about the man of lawlessness and what, and what his natures, his motives are. But Jesus will overthrow the lawlessness in, in his followers with the breath of his mouth and the splendor of his coming. Those who are, who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and to be saved. So God gave them over to a powerful delusion so that they will believe what they desire. Galatians 1 through 6 through 1, 6 through 12 says, there's no other gospel. Ain't no other gospel. Don't come bringing me nothing. I'm standing on what I know is true. Been standing on it. Ain't going ain't gonna to turn away now. It's been too good to me. I ain't turning away now. Like, keep that. I don't care who you are. I don't care what degree you hold, what pH you hold. I don't care if you're the apostle, officiant, officiant, bishop. You come to me with something other, I'm going to tell you like I told him. Man, miss me with that. Amen. Jesus all day. Who are you? You ain't got no heaven or hell to put me in. You, this is where you got to be like now in this day and age. Because people think they title, uh, they are uh, their following number, number, it's going to hold up in the kingdom. Ain't none of that holding up in the kingdom. Only who do the will of the Father. Second yeah. Corinthians 11, 1 through 4 says, someone preaching anything other than Jesus, or if you receive a different spirit or a different uh, gospel, you're going to be a curse. Now, I said all this to say, let me get into the names of Jesus. Since this novice, this young, young uh, newbie in the faith, tenderfoot in the faith, didn't know that there is more names to the name of Jesus. Because I said, brother, I said, he, I said, he's wonderful counselor. I said, he's the great I am. I'm like, well, God is the great I am. So names of Jesus. Now we're going to open up scripture. His name is Emmanuel. Yes. Turn to Matthew 1, the tw uh, verse 23. Matthew 1, verse 23. That's why I'm like, don't, that's why I be like, people won't come, keep coming to me like, do y'all not read this word? And they don't read the word. They just mad at the fact that a woman is standing her ground in this thing. And they like, well, dang, I, I, it should be me. With them praying fast. Right, right. Maybe God can use you. Matthew 1, uh, verse 23. Amen. And I'm just at a point right now, I'm like, I don't care who y'all, y'all come messing with me, I'm going to give you this word. <laughs> you messing with me. 
I'm at peace. I'm shoot, I'm just at in my sabbatical peace re- relaxation. And I got my food and sit right down there by that river, ate my food. Cause I said, no, this fu-. he had me, I was kind of mad. He had, I said, no, he ain't. Don't mess with me. Don't come to me with some foolishness like this. And I said, Missy, eat your food. I said, I'm a, I said, oh, I gotta, I wish we was having service tomorrow. Because this was on the Saturday. I said, I wish we was having service tomorrow because I'm going to preach on this. And so I, call, I think I called Elder Shobe a couple of days later telling him. And because he was like, yeah, that brother was already talking about off on something kind of tinging. And I, I was like, I can't believe. Like, how dare you talk about we don't know the name. Well, how'd you get hurt? You came to us from out of town. So we knew enough of something. But see, that's what happened when you don't, you, when you, you out here just looking for anything. And when this didn't soothe your cravings, you went and found something else. You walked away that fast. So let, let's, let me read Matthew 1 through 23. I mean, Matthew 1, verse 23. It says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name what? Emmanuel. She'll call his name what? She'll call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Yes. His name is Lamb of God. John chapter 1 through 29. When you get there, say amen. John chapter 1 through 29. That's why it's important for you to know the word. Because just think if he would have went to somebody who don't know the word, they would have been like, oh, so what? I've been, the pastor have been lying to me, saying the wrong name all this time. I'm in a cult. John chapter 1, verse 29. Even when I told the young brother, I said, but brother, he got more than one name. So you do know that, right? I said, I know it ain't Jesus. I said, but I'm not going to let that knock me. I said, I said, but he has many names. I said, he answers by Jesus when I pray. I said, I ain't got no issue. I said, if Jesus offends you, then say Yeshua. Amen. I was like, well, that's just another name. John verse 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 29. In the next day, John seeth Jesus coming into him and saith, what? Behold the Lamb of God. When I heard behold the Lamb of God, I know it's talking about Jesus. Now behold the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God, born into sin that I may live again. The precious Lamb of God. Holy is the Lamb. We know that's Jesus. We ain't have to say Jesus. We ain't have to say Emmanuel. Lamb of God is good enough there. Alpha and Omega. Turn to Revelation 22, verse 13. Revelations 22, verse 13. The, now, when we see red, who's speaking? When we see red, who's speaking? Jesus. Jesus. Sister Janice, Jesus. Yes. I, I thought you were saying God. Oh. <laughs> Which is God. I mean, Jesus is God in the flesh. Now, Revelations 22 and 13. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Here's another name, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, the first and the last, Jesus. King of the Jews, Matthew 27, verse 37, Matthew chapter 27, verse 37. There's another name for Jesus. That's why I said I'm not letting no names. Y'all, y'all can miss me with that. But think about how many Christians have been tripped up off of that, that walked away from God years ago 
when they found out that Jesus wasn't the original name. No, and I said, I'm pretty sure that the Romans named him that. I said, but I know he's Jesus. I know, I said, he has more than one name. So I said, so I'm not stuck there. I'm not stuck there. But I said, this is a good teachable moment. Matthew 27, verse 37. It says, and, and set up over his head. Whose head? Jesus. And set up over his head his accusation written, this is Jesus, the king of the Jew, Jews. Another name for Jesus, king of the Jews. Wonderful counselor. Oh, I know this for a fact. Mighty God, know that for a fact. Everlasting Father, I know that for a fact. Prince of Peace, know that for a fact. Let's turn to Isaiah 9 and 6. See, we're flipping through the New Testament and Old Testament. If you're watching online, you better learn this word. You better know your word for somebody to come and walk you out of your strong foundation. If you're in this sanctuary, know this word. Amen. Know this word. Even when you get disappointed in walking in this walk, because disappointment is going to come. That's what people don't realize. Life is not always happy, happy, joy, joy. There's valleys, there's highs, there's lows. It's like that in the weather. But each is needed because each Circumstance teaches you something. You learn through the valley. You learn to be content. You learn to don't mess your money up no more. You learn that I need to be by myself for this season. The highs, you learn to praise God because I remember the valley. But going, going the steady course to get up the valley, you learn to, it's good enough. Like, we good. We, we good. We good. I'm, I'm going for it. My eyes stand straight on Jesus. Amen. Then when you get to the valley high, you, you stay humble, but you rejoice. Right. You rejoice. Okay, let me read this. Oh, let me get there. Isaiah, Lord, I got to get there. Because it's important to know this word. That's why I love the word. I love the word. Isaiah 9. Nine and six. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called what? Wonderful Counselor. The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. And the Prince of Peace. Look at all these names just in one, one verse. Don't let nobody come to you no more by saying, Jesus ain't his name. Tell him, I know. He got a whole lot of names, baby. He's also, his name is also the bread of life. Turn to John 6 and 35. I got a few more names and then we're going to be finished. And I guess we did take all our time. <laughs> oh, Lord. I thought I was going to get be finished with this teachable moment fast. But it turned into a whole message. John 6. John 6. John 6 and 35. John 6. John 6 and 35. 6 and 35. And Jesus said unto them, here's this red again. I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. If you are still hungry, that means you ain't, you ain't keeping your eyes stared straight on Jesus. You're going to have to start praying and fasting. And you're learning to feed yourself. Quit looking for other people to feed you. Feed yourself. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. If you out here thirsty, you ain't keeping your eyes dead, dead straight, 
Oh, damn fast on Jesus. Amen. Let me tell y'all something. My husband's been gone since 2016. I have yet to be thirsty for somebody else's word. I don't listen to his messages. I mean, I can see them now. At first, I really couldn't see them. And I don't get online trying to feast off of nobody else. I self-feed. I, my eyes dead fast on Jesus. And here I am, a widowed woman, and I'm feeding myself. Happy to feed myself because this is all I know. I'm not moving my, my boundary line. I'm not getting off the rock of Christ Jesus because he is the cornerstone. I, he is what everything is built upon. I know that if I move off of that cornerstone, everything I have and everything I'm trying to do with my life, I, how God is using me, I know I will fail in it. You can't move off that cornerstone and think you're going to maintain it. So I'm going to stay on this cornerstone. It ain't failed me yet. Now let me read this, finish reading this, 35. So, 35, Lord. Okay, so it says, uh, if you believe on him, you will never thirst. And that's true. If you believe on him, you will never thirst. But you got to keep your eyes dead fast on him. You got to keep your heart I, I feasting in his word. And having a personal, 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 personal. You can't look for shortcuts through this thing. Oh, I'm going to go to this church because they're going to give me a right now word. Okay. Baby, that word might get you off. Feast on this word yourself. Get in here and see what God said when it pertains to your marriage, when it pertains to you raising your babies, when it pertains to how you need to live your life in godliness in this world. His word ain't changed. Let's go to, oh, he's the Redeemer, Jesus. Yeah. We know his name is Redeemer. Yeah. I know Redeemer lives. We know they ain't talking about no star. Right. We know that ain't talking about no, no uh, social media influencers. My Redeemer is Jesus. Amen. Isaiah 59 and 20. That's why I said this is a teaching. Thank you, Lord God. This is a teachable moment. And there's so many people that don't know the word, but yeah. say, I'm a Christian and get knocked off yeah. from these cats out here who don't know nothing. Like, I ain't going to follow no fool. I, I, foolish people and foolishness is foolishness. I don't deal with that. Like, you know what? Like, I don't do, I don't, get away from me. 59 and 20. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgressions. And Jacob saith the Lord. Jesus is our Redeemer. He's the living stone. 1 Peter 2, 4 through 8. 1 Peter 2, 4 through 8. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen by God and precious. Ye also as li uh, lively stones are built up, built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer us spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore, also it is contained in the scriptures, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on who? Him. Meaning that cornerstone is Jesus. He, the, him, he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Amen. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. See, to us who believe, Jesus is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Chief cornerstone means that is the, that is the, the stone that's holding the, the whole building up. Uh, the building is, that, that's the foundation of the building. 
Don't lose your foundation. Lord, one more. His name is faithful, true, faithful and true. Faithful and true. Revelations, back to Revelations 19. And then I told that brother, I said, Jesus, I said, the Bible talks about he has a name that no man know. I don't care how holy, how much Holy Ghost you got, how many hours you've been praying, you ain't going to know that name. The Bible's true. Don't let nobody tell you, I, God revealed to me the name that no man know. You a lie. Revelation 19, verses 11 through 12. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called what? Faithful and true, and in righteousness he doeth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. You see how people don't know what they do saying to your feet? And I didn't say this to put the young man down. I, I'm using this as a teachable moment because this brother came up to me convinced, convinced that I'm preaching wrong because I, and that I'm going to hell and sending others to hell because when we say Jesus. And I'm like, brother, you still tender in the foot. You ain't been saved long enough. You're going to have to grow in this thing. Amen. Just yeah. because you done heard somebody say something don't mean that's truth. And people are out here taking these podcasts as truth without having a personal relationship with the truth bearer. So that's all I'm saying this morning. morning know the truth for yourself. Self-feed. That's important to self-feed. Eyes closed, heads bowed so y'all can get down here and eat this food. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your truth. We thank you, Lord God, that when we humble ourselves and when, when we repent of our sins and when we surrender our will to you, that you will speak to us. Father God, I pray for those who are not spirit-filled. I pray that they will begin to seek you for your spirit, your spirit, your spirit of truth, your spirit of wisdom, your spirit of knowledge and understanding. Lord God, that when your Holy Spirit falls in their life after they repent of their multiple lifestyles of sin, that you will come up, the Holy Spirit will come upon them and begin to enlighten them to your word. That even when they read the word, that the truth of your word would just spew all up in their spirit, man. Father God, blood of Jesus over us as we go about our work week over us this week warrior angels guardian angels and ministering angels i give you charge over us keeping us safe from every hurt harm and danger protecting us from all evil lord god protect us from the snares and the traps of our enemies that our enemies purposely set against us father god cause our enemies in their bloodline to fall into those traps that they set for your people let every evil word and curse and hacks and jinx spoken over our lives return back to the originator of the, uh, whoever sent that. Yes. We say the devil because we know humans ain't supposed to be cursing. Father God, we give you praise, glory, and honor. Continue to lead and guide us as we surrender our lives to you willingly. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth, in that name that is still above every name, we pray. And everybody says.